we are beginning a new series. And that series is about one word, faith. Now be nice to me on my birthday Sunday and talk to me. Faith. Faith. The topic and subtopic, which I will keep both of them for the next two Sundays. The first topic for those that are prophetic, you're going to want to have church today is, I don't know where I'm headed. Will you look at someone and just say that? I don't know really where I don't. I really don't know where I'm headed. I don't know where I am and I don't know where I'm going. But I'll tell anybody, in order to get there, you'll need faith. My subtopic for three people, thank you, Elder Curry and Lasante for pushing me, is order my steps. Did I do something wrong in my speech today to where y'all are not talking to me? Genesis chapter 11, verse 28 through 32. In the King James and the message. In the message Bible, it will begin at 27. Then Genesis 12, verses 1 through 8. I'm going to rush through this because I want you uh, to really let all the things that I said sink in. I could preach so well this morning that you'll forget my speech. But I need you to remember that. Because that's the only uh, line of defense we have is love. Genesis 11 verse 28 through 32. And Haran died before his father Terah in the land of his nativity in Ur of Chaldees. Abraham and Nahor took them wives. The name of Abram's wife was Sariah. The name of Nahor's wife was Milcah, the daughter of Haran, the father of Milcah, and the father of Iscah. But Sariah was barren. She had no child. So this did not just happen years later. This woman was barren when she was ready to be pregnant in the beginning of the story. I want to talk to talk because sometimes you got to be something for a long time. And you have to be that until it no longer have as, has an effect on you. In the middle section ain't talking. Sometimes God will leave you in something until that something gets out of you. Sometimes he'll let you stay sick until you overcome sickness by your behavior. So when Sariah is introduced for the first time, she's introduced with her condition. She's barren, but yet she's introduced. Tira took Abraham's son and Lot, the son of Hara, his son's son, and Sariah, his daughter-in-law, and his son, Abraham's wife. And they went forth with them from Ur of Chaldees to go into the land of Canaan. They came unto Haran and dwelt there. And the days of Tira was 205 years. And then Tira, Abraham's daddy, y'all got to talk, preachers. Because you let me know when you're not well versed. Died in Haran. Which is Iraq. The message, the message Bible. This is the story of Terah. Terah had Abram, Nahor, Haran. Haran had Lot. That's that simple. Haran died before his father, Terah, in the country of his family, Ur of Chaldees. Simple. 
Abraham and Nahor each got married. Simple. Talk to me, young people. Abraham's wife was Sariah. Nahor's wife was Milcah, the daughter of his brother Haran. One of these married his brother's daughter. See, that's where you missed it. Because the one that married his brother's daughter is the father and mother of Lot. So Lot not only went to a strange land of sexuality, he was born out of a strange union as well. It's very important that you don't talk about what you have no research of. I don't care what tradition is, I'm not marrying any of my brother's wives. Especially not their daughters. I cannot marry my niece Kiki, who watches me every Sunday. We cannot get married. Not even for Jesus' sake. See, y'all too quiet. You wouldn't do it for the Lord? No, he got to find someone else for this one. I would do it if it was for the Lord. No, see, I'm too honest. No. God is not upset with your no. Sometimes he'll put you in something to see whether you can rationalize. Because ain't nothing happened wrong with Abram's life for three folk who scream until he took a lot with him. Y'all catch that slow next week. Some of y'all are going through hell because you took Lot with you. Trying to help the family. Well, that's my second cousin removed from my mama's side. She ain't got nowhere to live. I'm going to let them live with me. Then they start stealing everything, telling you it's not them. And you still let them stay because you're doing it, you think, for Christ's sake. You doing this for Christ's sake. Now you're in a crisis because you took something or someone with you. I'm going to prove it that God told you leave. Leave your country and your kindred. Yep, okay, they don't have to talk to me. And look at folk who don't know the Bible question. Well, that's not what it really meant. You don't even know the Bible. You don't read it on a regular basis. But you have an opinion about what God meant. Father, help us in Jesus' name. Haran had two daughters, Milka and Iska. Sariah was barren. She had no children. Are y'all into the scriptures? Terah took his son Abram, his grandson Lot, Haran's son, and Sariah, his daughter-in-law, Abraham's wife, and set out with them for Ur of Chaldees for the land of Canaan. When they got as far as Haran, they settled down. Terah lived 205 years. He died in Haran. Look at somebody and tell them, don't die before you get there. Give me about another 34, 35 minutes. Genesis 12, verses 1 through 8. Look, look at someone again that you care about. Tell them, don't die before you get there. Because some of y'all have died taking other people places. Oh, y'all quiet. He died taking a lot with him.
This is a sanctified church. I told you, be careful at any given moment. Genesis 12, verses 1 through 8. Now the Lord said not to Abraham. He's not Abraham yet. He's Abram. Just like you are not who you are to be yet. Oh, y'all ain't clapping for yourself. People are judging you, but this is not the finished product. This is me in progress. For some of you, this is you in transition. I got help with the purple back there. I ain't got no more help, but that's my real cheerleader back there. If he's the father of faith, brother apostle, overseer, then how can I start talking about faith without giving the historicity of the progenitor and I want to inform 10 or 20 of you who are astute and love God and love the Bible being preached as is written that faith ain't in none of the chapters in Genesis let me just say this for talkers they had to find a word for his walk Y'all didn't care. What are you talking about? Sometimes you have to do it before there's a word for it. So what Abraham is doing is taking a walk in the dark. And then later you get, we walk by faith and not by sight. Boy, y'all better be glad I ain't got a voice. I promise you. Don't make a name for yourself. Walk it out. And walk it until people have to call it what it is. Walk. Don't talk. Don't try to defend. Walk the walk. Walk it out. I didn't know this is what it feels like in your 60s, but let me, I'm going to talk to Father Hope and Barbara to see what it's like in your 70s. The Lord said to Abram, get thee out of thy country. From thy kindred. From your father's house. And go unto a land, I'm going to prophesy soon, that I'll show you. Until you get there, you will be who you are. But if you get there, I'll make thee a great nation. I will bless thee. Make thy name great. Which meant the name you had ain't great, it's just good. And I'm going to put your life in a place where you shall be a blessing. You're not just going to be blessed. You're going to be in a place with God where you can be a blessing. It's too quiet in the back of these churches. Then here's part three, verse three, where you should scream. And I will bless them that bless you. I will also curse them that curse you. And in you shall all families of the earth be blessed. So Abram didn't waste no time. He departed. As the Lord spoke to him. And here's the issue. And Lot, he didn't take him. Lot went with him. We preach that wrong. And Lot, close that door quick. And Lot went with him. Look at your name and tell him, be careful who you let go with you. 
See, if I take you, then that means I asked you. But if you went with me, that means I allowed you. And some of you are getting what you allowed. Am I teaching correct or am I? Abraham departed as the Lord spoke to him. Chantel and Lot went with him. Abraham was 75 years old when he departed out of Haran. Abraham took Sarai, his wife, and Lot, his brother's son, and all their substance that they had gathered, and the souls that they had gotten in Iran. Y'all don't like this. And they went forth into the land of Canaan. And into the land of Canaan they came. Abraham passed through the land of Canaan. There was a place called Sikkim. Sikkim Holy Ghost. That's an old mother's prayer. Sikkim Holy Ghost. You that can't laugh won't last. But let's go on. Went to the place of Sishim unto the plan of Mori, and the Canaanites was then in that land. The Lord appeared unto Abraham and said, Unto thy seed will I give this land. And then he built an altar unto the Lord who appeared unto him. And he removed from thence unto the mountain of the east of Bethel, pitched his tent, having Bethel on the west and high on the east. And he built an altar unto the Lord, and he called upon the name of the Lord from that altar. One more scripture. Hebrews 11 verse 8. When I read it, somebody communicate with me. By faith. Abraham. By faith. Abraham, not by God, not by the Spirit. I don't move without the Spirit. No, you need to move by faith. That's why some of you ain't blessed. I'm waiting on the Spirit to move me. No, no. Come on, scholars. You got to move by faith. Because faith will not only move you in the right direction, it also leads you out of the wrong one. You that clap, you already out of it, whatever that it is. By faith, Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should after receive for an inheritance, he obeyed. And he went out, here we go, not knowing where he was going. Come on, young people, help me. He went out not knowing. Put that in the message Bible. It should say the same thing, but I want to see. By an act of faith, Abraham said yes to God's call to travel to an unknown place that would later become his home. When he left, he had no idea. Come on, y'all not talk. He had no idea where he was going. By an act of faith, he lived in the country promised him, lived as a stranger camping in tents. Let's just finish it. Isaac and Jacob did the same. Living under the same promise. Y'all don't hear. Some of you going to be blessed because he made a promise to your parents. Some of you can't clap on that. And to your parents' parents. And that's why the children of Israel prayed to the God of Abraham. Isaac. And Jacob. I think this is a good text, but 
Abraham did it by keeping his eyes on an unseen city with real eternal foundation, the city designed and built by God. You may be seated. Order my steps. Now I'm going to read these two paragraphs and I want you to digest them holistically. I want you to feast on them. These first two paragraphs are not research. They are my words as I meditated upon the scriptures. They are my own, Michelle, observation on what I feel the text is trying to say to us as a body. Say amen. Some people that are at the point of frustration or feel like giving up are doing it. Y'all don't hear me. They are doing what is most common and comfortable than staying on their journey. Hold on. They are so frustrated that they don't know that the journey they're on is a journey of faith. So they rather go around in circles in life of a routine because they're more familiar with what will happen than what they don't know is happening. When your faith is intact, you don't have to have all understanding about what's going on in your life. Sometimes questions stops the conquest. I wish I had my church because I want to preach. Most people love living a comfortable life. But when God asks you or I to leave our comfort zones, he is basically counting on those who can leave the comfort zone to become something that most people failed at trying to be. Uh oh, I can't get help. There were others before you, but they rather stay comfortable than to stay on the journey of faith. Let me say this for old school people. I got two spies in here today. I recognize you. But I want to say this to about five people from my great grandma's song list. Traveling shoes, Lord. I got on. Y'all know there's a difference in the sports sneaker leisure casual sneaker a track running sneaker when you go to certain stores they're in categories believe I'll run on oh y'all and see what the end but for three or four of you that's going through temporary frustration that may lead you to go back or for those who can get through it and go forward, I've got a feeling that everything. See, you that are talking, that's let me know you've walked this walk before. You that are not, you're suspicious. I'm trying to survive. We're not surviving, we're thriving. Look at somebody and tell me, I'm not in survival mode, I'm in thriving mode. I'm pressing on. I, the upward way. I'm going to try not to preach. New heights I'm gaining. Every day still praying as. On upward bound. Lord plant my feet. <laughs> Watch it judge. On higher. My heart has no desire to stay when doubts around me every day. Still praying as on upward bound. Lord, plant my feet. 
Grab someone near you that's friendly. Tell them, let's go higher. Faith, simply put, is a walk in the dark. May I give you an example? I used to live in my home and used to work late and then I would come home after my second job and I would open the door and never have to turn on the lights after I got familiar with where everything was before the lights went out. Oh yeah, see y'all missed it. The mind it's like a navigational system. It tells you walk it through in the light. And then let's see, can you walk it through when the lights go off? Oh yeah. I never had to turn the lights on after 30 days because mentally the couch was to my right, turn left. Y'all, you never, so you were able to actually navigate in the dark. This side ain't got no talk right now, y'all. But you had to get adjusted. But I got married and we lived in that house. And one day I came in the house and I navigated in the dark as I often so do. And I tripped over something, busted my knee open, started screaming and creaming out. And my wife came downstairs and everybody who lived in the house, because it was big, said, what's wrong with you? And I was hurt. I was screaming. I thought I bust my knee all open, broke it. I was in pain. I was in anguish. Blood profusely coming out my knee. I'm screaming to people, get me some ice, get me this, get me something, get me a Band-Aid. I'm paying so much attention to the pain, to the blood. But the issue was for 10 folk, the reason why I got hurt is between the time I left and came back, the house had been readjusted with new furniture, resituated. I was in a new season with some pain. Y'all ain't, and some of you don't understand. The pain you're feeling is because God's making some adjustments. So that when the lights come on, you take your eyes off of the pain. And you focus on the bigger picture. I went from pain to, wow, who bought this? I was still rubbing my knee. But the pain was subsiding quick. I said, is it paid for? When they said it was paid for, I got up on one leg and hopped and got on the recliner chair. Give me the remote. Let me watch TV on my new recliner. Some of y'all are too stuck looking at the problem. But faith gives you the ability to see what's coming and not focus on what is. Now faith is the substance. Of things hoped for. The evidence. Of things I cannot see. I'll save this to Bible study Wednesday. Because some of you read it but you didn't grasp it. Curry grasp it quick. And those who are educated should be able to catch it. And those who are regular students and readers of the word should catch it. Faith is both things. It's substance and evidence. So faith goes to an invisible substance to tangible evidence. Y'all don't hear me. You might give up on faith, but faith won't give up on you. So as long as you have faith for it, it will come. Touch somebody and tell them, well, then I guess I'm a millionaire then already by faith. Tell them, I guess I'm married already by faith. I guess I live behind some gates somewhere by faith. I guess I'm the CEO of a major company by faith. It looks like an employee right now. But it'll look like an entrepreneur as you keep journeying. You have to be what you are today to respect what you're going to become down the road. 
You won't mean what I tell you to say, but you're saying it because I mean to help you get there. But look at the neighbor and tell him, I thank God for all the hell I went through. Tell him I went through it. I'm not going to it. Y'all just let him know. Tell him in the midst of all of the hell, something glorious is about to appear in my life. And I'll be able to testify, look where the Lord. Let me say this sadly. <laughs> sadly saying, and I hate to go this route for 10 of you, some of you gave up too quick. Sadly to say, some of you gave up too quickly. And now you're not going to like me, but hopefully you'll stay a member. And that's this. You gave up too quick and you think God gave you a second chance. Ain't no second chance. You got to get faith for another journey. There ain't one lane on a highway. So if you get out of line on that highway, you can't get the same position back. You may have to put on your blinker. You're still going in the same direction, but you may have to shift lanes. Some of y'all think God is a toy that you can play with. Yes, Lord. No, God, I'm sorry. Lord, I want it back. No, God, forget it. I didn't mean it. You can't treat God like that. Faith is a steady walk. Y'all it. Faith does not look to the right or the left. Faith says, if I die, I'll die in the army of the Lord. Faith tells Moses, through the word of the Lord, take the children out of Egypt. That's what God is telling Bain to do for our children's generation. Take the children that shall become out, and you can use any of my clips, tell them sound bites, out of Egypt. But when he takes them, the people walk with Moses by a word that's not written yet, faith. They don't know where they're going. But they're following who God's on. Young. Two, he don't know where he's taking them. But he's obeying the word of the Lord. Y'all, all of us are blind to an extent. While y'all this close not talking. All of us are blind to an extent. But if God be for you. Where they're going, no one knew that the route they took was a dead end. They got there and all they could see was a Red Sea. The people started complaining. We should have stayed in Egypt. We could have been having a Philly cheesesteak. Y'all didn't read that? It says leeks and onions on the bun. Oh, y'all quiet. We could have been chilling like a villain, having us a sandwich at the bodega in Brooklyn, New York. We... Oh, I guess I'm not preaching. They even said, would to God that we were back in Egypt. They insulted God. But God told Moses, he said, now here's my deal. He says, I'm going to show them I'm with you, but I'm going to show them I'm mad at them. He said, we're going to get through this Red Sea. But it's going to take 40 years to get to where I promise. They said, it would have only taken you 42 days with a slow walk. But because they kept opening their mouth asking questions, I'm going to push a 40-day arrival to 40 years. Now, I want you to look at somebody and tell them, I ain't got that much time to be playing. And in order for you to make it on time, you've got to go through a season of knowing when to shut up. And some of you ain't good at this one. Shut up. When Bishop was preaching, he was looking at me. That's just where I'm looking. 
I got to look somewhere. When you want to talk, that's when you should teach yourself to be silent. The Bible says study to be quiet because when you do, you're more focused on where you're going, not on what you're saying. Who you talk to while on your journey will determine your arrival. Let me get back. I see five people mad because all you do is talk. You don't talk in church, though. But after church, back in the back of the back of the man, come on. Have a little talk with Jesus. Tell him all about you. Y'all talk to me. I talk to God more often than most because he's where I get my vision from. So who should I talk to the most? The one that gives me the vision. The challenge with our conversation for three folk who would jump is most of the times he don't answer. See, I got help, but you, most of the time when I be like, now, Lord, you the one that told me, and I need to ask you something. 30 years later, I'm still waiting on an answer. But here's for screamers, but while I'm waiting, I'm still walking. Y'all, I am not waiting, stopping, crying, having a pity party. I'm going to keep on walking. Y'all know they got through the Red Sea. Because y'all standing here trying to make me work hard. I told you I don't have a voice and it's my birthday. But y'all want to work a black man hard. I'm a little sentimental today and y'all still ain't encouraging me. Y'all are very unfair. I know what Moses feels like. Instead of stretching the rod, you want to hit somebody with it. I know. God asked Moses, what is that that thou hast in thine hand? He said, a rod. He said, stretch the rod towards the issue. He didn't tell him what would happen. Y'all didn't preach that right. He did not tell him, I will open the Red Sea. Moses just followed instructions. And when he did this and saw the water start moving, he did it further. Then he saw it back up, then he stretched all the way out. Sometimes you got to test that word. You got to put your hand a little out. Y'all ain't talking. And once you see things changing, you got to stretch out a little further. You ought to tell somebody, I'm about to stretch all the way out. Because tell them, I've got to make it through this. Moses could have found another route out. There was another route. But God told him, keep straight. You don't have faith when you're creating your own way out. Faith is when you stay where God tells you and watch God re... re watch him move the furniture. Get hurt. Bump your knee. Get a lump on your head. But everything's paid off. That's new. Faith is not you coming up with ideas. You all think I have to pastor here? I'm Kojic. You think I don't have real offers with major congreg? Are you crazy? You think I can't interview for a church right now? Or teach as an adjunct professor in any place I choose? But God said Shabbat. You don't think I wake up and be like, I ain't going to church with them this morning. It's my birthday. Forget all of them uncircumcised Philistines. Y'all don't think I feel like that sometimes. But if I don't make it through this Red Sea, we'll never see the promised land. Somebody has to do it in the dark. Come on, what is faith? It is simply a walk in the dark.
What y'all deba deo shimbaha? What you don't see about faith for three folk close to me and out there is when he stretches forth the rod. Y'all talking about and and the water split and they walked across. See, you make the story too simple. Let me tell you the process of when the waters congealed. For the 30 folk that catch it, your life will change as of tomorrow. Watch this. Once he does that, the wind must blow. Dry up the ground that's already muddy. The fish and the whales can no longer cross over to see each other. They've got to know they can no longer cross a certain territory. Y'all are still quiet. Moses has to let the people go across first. The leader can't go across first. He's got to make sure who he's assigned to makes it across. You've got to be able to watch others make it before you do and be happy that they are getting where they're going. You have to. When they walk over everything that should devour them, alligators and etc. have to watch what they want to digest. Be untouchable. Oh, yeah. Some of y'all ain't gonna scream on this. While you're on your journey, every now and then pause and look at the enemy. And keep on walking. Y'all ain't talking. Stick your tongue out. Ah, do something. Woosa. But let it know this is your territory that I'm walking through. And you are upset that even on your territory, I cannot be digested. I feel glory in this house. This sermon is from my heart. We'll be having it all next month. Faith. All month. Michelle, when they get over to the other side, this will happen for you. When they get over to the other side and all of them are safely across, including Moses. God tells Moses, don't stretch the rod yet. Let those who are after you get in it. Let them think they have the same grace. Oh, yeah. And Pharaoh's army with chariots and horses. I'm going to talk to screamers. You got there by foot. They get in there with horses and chariots. They have the ability to get there much quicker. But while they're in there, the floor became mud again. The wheels sunk into the ground. The water started getting loose. The alligators saw a meal. Y'all ain't talking. Everything that was for you turned against them. And if God be for us. Now you that ain't screaming, you must be an enemy to somebody. But you that are screaming, you could have been an enemy, but you refuse because I have a destination. I have somewhere to be and I must be there by a certain time. I have the responsibilities of others on my shoulder and I must make sure they get where they need to be on time. My last observation. All of them that come after you to kill you, they're going to drown. And they're going to drown because they have no destination. All they have is a situation. People only bother folk that have a destination. And they're bothering you because they're stuck in a situation. They have nowhere to go. They're just following you. Grab somebody just for a minute or 30 seconds. Tell them you are going where you should be. Tell them you're going for a walk in the dark. One more observation. Bishop Robinson, one more observation. It's simple, but I'll try to focus on it and give it a little depth. 
But here it is for Temple Gold Screen. In a race, yes. when you're running forward, every time you look back, you lose time. Yes. Yes. I'm going to say it again. I know some of you going to act deep. I should ask you to prove it. Because this is not proven in every situation. When you are running forward in a speed race, every time you look back, you have wasted some time. Let me make it a little more simplified and hear loud screams. You that can hear me in this temple who will yell. Why are you concerned about someone talking behind you? That's why they do it behind your back. Y'all, because they are not in your future. Y'all ain't talking, they're not even in the future. Oh, yeah. Distance of the glands. This is called distance of the glands. A quick glance back over your shoulder might only cost you a fraction of a second. If you're running, you've lost about a fraction of a second. There is something shorter than a second called a millisecond. You, you're running forward and you glance back. You lose a fraction. Thank you for listening, Sochi Pastor, of a second. While a full head turn to see what's behind you will cost you notable amount of time. Which means if I glance back, I'll lose a little time. But if I turn back, I'll lose. You, all right, I'm going to say it again. Because some of y'all done got lost because we ain't. But listen. If I'm running forward in the direction of associate pastor and somebody behind me is talking to me or creeping up on me and I do that. I still have my momentum of time, but I've lost a fraction of a second. But if they talk loud enough and I give them too much attention and I turn all the way around and still running backwards, I'm losing a lot of time because I gave something a full turn that shouldn't have a turn at all. Y'all ain't Look how quiet it just got on that. Some of you have given certain things a full turn. Still headed in the right direction. But will not win the race. Because you did something we don't do in racing. You turned around. The reason why the children of Israel took 40 years is they gave Egypt a full turn. They said, would to God that we were back there. When your past starts looking more appealing than your present. And you consider going back there. That's because you have not seen the promise of the future. Your present is nothing but a coach. It tells you, you can go back to the familiar. Or you can look forward to the surprise of the future. The future is something you've never seen in your past. And even though you're not familiar with it, you ought to want to at least see it. Y'all, I'd rather see something I've never seen than to go back to what I know is going to be the same thing. Let me give a little understanding to 100 of you out of the 170 to those who would jump and scream. Whatever's in your past, it's going to be there. So if I was you, I'd get to the future. Because you don't have to look for the past. They're going to be right where they were. Same address, same apartment, same car, same people doing the same thing. And when you go back, they're going to ask you to treat them. Can I borrow your car? Can I borrow some money? Because they know the future paid you. Y'all ain't talking. Once they know you got paid for the future, the past job is, can I have it? Huh? 
forgetting those things. Talk to me, Amber. Which y'all behind? I thought I had a church. Reaching forth to those things which are ahead of me. I press. Which means it's not easy. It's difficult because I'm still not comfortable with what I'm going through to get there. But I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Look at somebody, see if they're your friend or if they're your foe and tell your neighbor, I got to get there by the end of June. <laughs> tell them there's four legs in my race and I'm on the fourth leg. I've got to make up for lost time. I don't know how I'm going to do it. I got to catch my second win. I got to pick up some speed. I cannot run at the pace that I've been running at. I have to find a second win. Y'all don't hear me? And say to myself, there goes the finish line. I must not look back another moment because I don't have a second to lose. Now, some of you are not going to feel this message because the truth is you feel like you've already arrived. I have more than I've ever had in my life, but you have not received all that God has for you in life. I have more than I should have. Y'all ain't talking to me, but I know I don't have as much as I can. You follow? You don't have it all until you have enough to bless somebody else. Yeah. See, y'all, he said, Abraham, I'm not going to make them bless you. I'll bless them that bless you, curse them that curse you. But when I'm through with you, I'll make you a blessing. And when I say this and the ten folk that should don't, don't jump, you blew your own future. And that's this. The reason why you're having such a hard time is your heart wants to be a blessing to somebody. And the devil is doing his best job. Hey, come on, man. You're not lying. I'm going to bless my church. I'm going to bless my parents. I'm going to bless my leader. And the devil says, put all the stumbling blocks. You're not running the race. You're jumping hurdles. Y'all ain't talking. You've got to run through troops and leap over walls. But God said, tell you, I'm going to give it to you. I promise you. For the race is not given to the swift. Nor is the battles given to the strong, but unto them that endureth. Oh, what a birthday I feel now. To the end. After this one story, slow runners. Slow runners have a bit of a wiggle room. They can lose a fraction of a second without major impact. Slow runners. But elite runners, which I believe are in here today, touch them and tell them I'm elite. Come on, say it with proud. Say it with pride. Elite runners, when they run at high speeds, even a brief glance takes away significant time. When you are elite or chosen, you don't have time for the called. The devil already knows you a winner, but the tool to make a winner a loser is how often you turn around. Good God right now. Faith don't turn heads, it changes lives. Tell somebody that. Tell someone, tell them and mean it. Faith does not turn heads. It changes lives. I want to reiterate to the 10 of you out of all of you, the 10% out of the all of you, that you're being attacked hard because you want to be a blessing. Once God makes you a blessing, God's going to make you a perpetual blessing. You will be helping others without hurting yourself. Yeah. 
You won't have to take from your bills to help somebody else bill. You're going to be taking from a different fund to help them while your source is still full. Faith does not drain you. Now, I don't know why some of you won't act like you may have not known what faith is. But I don't do a lot of looking back. I don't do a lot of glancing. My father taught me because I'm only five, six, and I stole a half. So I'm five, six and a half. And my father told me when I played basketball in school and I was a darn good player, he says... The rim is your objective. I said, what? He said, those who dunk on it get the same two points you get shooting. Oh, y'all quiet. He said, and because you're short and can dunk don't mean you can play. He said, focus on the rim, not the jump. Y'all ain't talking. Oh, yeah. And I know y'all ain't going to scream, but three men ought to yell. God says, tell you, the further you are from the rim, the more points you can make. Because sometimes you only have a few seconds to shoot it from far away. You can't get it to the person under the boards. You got to now trust someone who's elite. Like a Steph Curry. Y'all ain't tell. You got to touch somebody who can catch and shoot between 1.2 seconds and walk off and talk about he got it in his veins. Y'all, some of you don't have God in your veins. But every day I wake up, I'll be like, where are we going now, Lord? I'm fiending for future progress. I'm, I, I can't take the same thing all the time. I'm fiending for some When you feed the past, you starve the future. Will you tell somebody that? When you feed your past, you're doing nothing but starving your future. By the time you get to the future, it'll be skinny. And your past will be fat. Isn't it supposed to be the opposite? What they say, starve a cold, feed a fever? Oh, see, parents don't know that no more. You just, you feed a fever. Baby got a fever, you don't give him water, you give him food. Baby got a cold, you don't let him eat because it becomes mucus. And all you mothers that ain't talking, y'all, y'all, please stop having babies. Don't birth what you don't know how to take care of. There was a story about a horse and a little boy. God gave this boy and horse the power to communicate. They understood one another. I'm closing. Look at me and talk. One of them has two legs. The other one has four. Don't get jealous of who has more legs. Y'all ain't talking. You see how the person near you didn't clap for you? Because... They ain't going nowhere. Normally, the boy should be on the back of the horse. But the story is about two people or two entities having to make it on their own. Which means you're in a season where you can't ride no one's back. Y'all quiet. That's why some folk cut you off because they can't get nothing out of you no more. So now you're useless to them. They're fine as long as you carry them because they don't need faith to be carried. But to walk on your own, you need faith. The horse and the boy began to talk. They understood each other. I hear somebody in the middle section getting bored talking about, here go them stories, man. Just stick to the scripture. I hear you trying to, trying to make me preach. And I hear you talking about ain't none of that fools in the Bible. Men and animals don't talk. Well, I don't know. There was a man riding the back of a jackass. (laughs) 
and the man was beating on this beast because he was going in the wrong direction and the beast saw the direction better than him. And in order for him to stop beating on what he was riding, God had to give the beast the ability to speak. And the beast's words were, and it's only words for three folk, is I'm trying to stop you from killing yourself. And some of y'all hate people that are in your business divinely by God to deliver a message that you are headed in the wrong direction. It looks good while you're headed there. When he rolled that beast, Sister Javesi called an ass because of his sexual. You have colts, foils, donkeys, all classes, all classes, all classes of donkeys. Y'all thought y'all were going to catch me? Y'all thought I was going to try to rap on that one, huh? Nah. All classes, right? All classifications. When he first gets on this female's back, and I know y'all didn't read it, she was called an ass because she was female. And I need two men who are strong to jump on this. A lot of women carry men. And after that man gets what he wants, he becomes domestically violent. But the only way you can stop it being the jackass is you got to talk. You don't keep letting him ride. You hee-haw. Now, Negro, let me tell you something about who you think I am. Sometimes what startles people is your ability to speak. Abusive men don't like women who can talk, but let me come back. I'm talking. Man, shut up, donkey. Sit down. That's not power. That's not respect. That's the most insecure, intimidating outburst ever. That you don't know how to get results by common conversation. Me and my son hang out. He's newly married, two, three years, what have you. How and every now and then, he's always in work mode. He gets very serious. I'll go to his warehouse. I'll go to him there. We'll go eat. We'll go to the gym. We are really like father and son. And sometimes his wife will call at a most unfortunate time, and he'll look at papers too quick, and the numbers not be right. And he'll call her and raise his tone and be like, are these the right numbers? And I'd wait till he finished, and i tell him, call her back. Now, what he don't know is the day he don't listen to me, our relationship is dissolved, right? Because I'm set there to make sure he makes it the correct way. Once you think you can talk to me like you talk to your wife. And that goes for any of my boys. Y'all ain't talking to me. And you only get one shot. We ain't even coming back. I said, he texted her, I was wrong, because he was wrong that day. He's not always wrong, but he was wrong that day, and he takes business serious. He's a young man, and he don't want to mess up with numbers and people's products, and you got to be as good as your presentation. He goes to her because her love is to help him, but her love for business is real estate, but she helps him. So he texts her back, I'm sorry, you were right. I said, oh, no, no, no. Tell her the same way you told her. You told her verbally. Pick the phone up. Call. He FaceTime, baby. I want you to know that, oh. And that apology turned into some action. Y'all ain't talking, that apology. Look, somebody tell them, we got action, we got action. So the horse, and the little boy, we're about to go home, is in the woods, both of them lost. God has given them the ability to understand each other. Have I bored y'all today? I see you, Lance. And the boy says to the horse, can I get on your back 
and you ride me out of here. And I'll take care of you later because you can see further than I can because you're taller than I. The horse says, not today. We are both lost. Some of you that are old, you remember Mr. Ed, don't you? Was a talking horse. You know? But he only talked with his master. Oh, yeah. Other people came around. He, but when his master came, he said, now, Ed, this is what we must do. Y'all don't remember? Y'all too young. And those who do don't want to tell their age. But I remember. A horse is a horse, of course, of course. I remember. It was in black and white. I watched all of the animal movies, even though I was a thug. Mr. Ed, Flipper. Let me get out of here. I'm a Lassie. I watched all of them because they all had masters. I didn't watch freestyle animals. So he asked the horse. Can you at least be my lookout and tell me what direction to go into? The horse said no. He said, well, how are we going to get out of here? He said, ain't no we right now. It's you. And I'm going to see who jumps the cream. He says, oh, you think I'm lost because you lost. He said, but I'm out here to graze. I'm eating to get enough strength to continue my journey. He said, now, you messing with my eating time. Oh, y'all didn't move. Some of y'all really are telling me something. I, I get it. He said, well, Mr. Horse is very special. I don't mean to get on your eating time, but I thought you was lost. He said, no, the journey is still for a little while, and I need strength, so I must eat. He said, but I'm not lost. He says, well, can you at least point me? He said, no. He said uh, to the little boy, do you serve God? Yes, I do. He said, and God is my creator. He said, he's given us both the ability to get out of what we in. The little boy says, are you going to tell me? He said, I told you I'm eating. Oh, yeah. Because sometimes faith will look rude. I know. Look at everybody not clapping. Faith ain't always friendly. Just like pastor said, favor ain't fair. And the man said, I mean, I mean, the boy said to the man, I mean, to the horse, he said, well, can you at least give me something that'll get me started? He said, yeah. He said, now listen here, little boy. See, faith can be rude. You see how some of you would have walked off, skip it. I don't need your help because I don't like how you talk. Forget how I talk. You stuck. You want to be treated nice in a situation that you dying in. You want me to nicely tell you, you know, you're dying. You're going to lose everything you have. I'm sorry to tell you. The horse speaking his language under the power of God says, now listen, you cannot see your way out of this. He said, I've been a, 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 a sanctioned by God, unctioned by God not to help you get out of it. He said, but you do have the ability to get out of it. And the little boy had a tantrum. I can't see my way out of this. I might as well die right here. The horse said, now that's your choice. <laughs> oh, y'all quiet. He said, but if you're going to die, stop talking so I can finish eating. Y'all ain't talking. See how some of you won't clap because you the little boy. But some of us, instead of helping you, we could have been doing some more of what we could do ourselves. But the mere fact that we want to be a blessing, we are stopping along our journey to tell you, you can make it. Order my steps in your word, dear Lord. Lead me. Guide me every day. Send your anointing. Your father, I pray. Order my steps. 
in your mashanda. The just shall live. I'm talking to folk who want to have just one minute of church. Nobody told me that the road would be easy. Come on, let's scare somebody. But I don't believe. Y'all not talk. He's brought us this far. Some through the waters. Some through the flood. Some through great trials. Those who know how you made it, just shout. But all through the blood. I'm sorry, y'all. I'm a Pentecostal preacher. He said, only do what you can see to get what you can't. Oh, y'all missed it. Here it goes, Brother AP, Associate Pastor, catch this and preach it. He said, you can't see where you're going, but you can see your next step. He said, just put one foot. He said, with all this talking you've been doing, you could have been a half a mile down the road. But you want to hold and stop time by looking back and speaking to people who don't matter and folk that don't have a destination. When you have a destination, it's called one foot after the next. Y'all need to. Faith is taking one step at a time, knowing that the next step might be your step out of what you're in. Some of you took a step and now you're in the wilderness. You are in a frustrating place. But God says five steps ahead of you, there's a well of water waiting for you to drink. But you're so stuck on where you are right now that you don't even see you're not far from where you need to be. You need to grab somebody by the hand and pull them and say, come on out that frustration. Y'all just do it for 30 seconds and grab them prophetically and say, come on out of there. If you grabbed them and they resisted you or rolled their eyes, leave them right there. But find somebody that needs to make it by the end of the month and grab them and say, come on out of there. Come on, tell them, come on. Come on. Come on. All right, I'm done. Grab somebody by the hand and say, I'm not going to lie to you. No, come on, act like God's using you and tell me, I'm not going to lie to you. I felt like giving up. I felt like throwing in the towel. Come on, bass player, get on this bottom. Tell me, I felt like walking away. Tell them even this morning I had some frustration. But tell them right now where I stand. I hear the Lord say press on. You ought to grab your neighbor and say hey neighbor. Press on now. Because by the end of the month you shall be there. Now they don't know what their there is. But tell them you shall be there. Let me close before y'all take the voice away. And I need it for next Sunday. But hear this. One step at a time. One step at a time. I don't hear Sister Patty talk to me one step. You can't get it looking around the church now. You got to be focused. One step at a time. If you know God's going to give you a house this year, go look for the furniture now. You don't need one dollar at a time. It's one step. Or you're at a time. If you know you're going to get a new car, you go looking for something to put that smells good in the car. It's one. You look at your fake keys and act like they're your new keys. And when people ask you why you're screaming so loud, tell them I just got a glimpse of the future. 
my faith looks up to thee thou lamb of calvary savior divine now hear me let me close now hear me while i now thank you Jesus now the Lord is your Mashiach hold that music I tell my whole now now hear me while I pray Lord take all my sins away Lord let me from this day be holy thine if you say these words to your neighbor and they don't get excited, hold your conversation for at least three hours. If you're married, hold it for at least 30 minutes. If you don't know them at all, hold it till next Sunday. Put that person on verbal punishment because they're the reason why you keep slowing down. But I want you to tell your neighbor this with power and faith and see their response. Tell them uh, we're going to arrive on time. Tell them we got off track. We made some wrong stops. We took with us some wrong people. But God said you're gonna arrive on time. He's an on-time God. Yes, he is. May not come when you want him, but he'll be there right on time. Sam, you got to learn to fill in for preachers. It's like playing for a quartet group. He's an on-time God. Yes, he is. I said, yes, he is. Come on, church and visitors. Yes, he is. One more time with power. Yes, he is. Let's close right here until Wednesday. Shakota be ansia. Don't worry about the tongue speaking. Look past it. Hey, Shama. Glory. I know y'all ain't gonna believe me and certain members of mine or the screen, but when I looked at some of your shoes, I saw mud on your feet. God says, tell you, you just stepped out of the worst part of your journey. been waiting on. That's much better. Let me close. Abraham, part one, we're closing. Abraham takes his final step, Tiffany. Look at me, sons and daughters of God. Men and women. When he gets there, overseeing apostle, he's at a place where nothing is. And God tells him, you're there. God's word and his sight don't agree. Let me say it again. He stops where there's nothing. And the voice of God says, you're there. God's voice and his sight don't agree. Let me make it a little more simple for one person who will jump and go crazy and don't care who looks because you respect what I'm telling you prophetically. And that is you can want a car and want it bad and has everything you want, then look at the price and get discouraged. 
the price should not stop what your heart desires. Because when prices go up, prices can come down. Now, I don't, I don't understand how you do it. If God does not get what he requires, you will not get what you desire. He requires of us. He's there. I'm closing. Sister N Nikita, he's there. And the voice of God tells him, stop walking. Andrew, he says, you're there. And God sees that Abram is despondent. He's discouraged. Look at me, we're close. He says, there's nothing here. God says, what's that under your feet? He said, sand. He said, pick up a handful of it and see can you count each speck. He said, that's impossible. He said, you have thousands of particles of sand in your hand. He says, that's how many blessings I'm going to give you. More than you can count. Oh, y'all, now, faith is painting a picture of what he considers to be nowhere. The darker it gets where he is, the more visible the stars become. He says, look over your head. Count all the stars. He said, I can't. He said, and neither you will you be able to count your seed in your seed seed. Hold this. This is for mature screamers. And what you're counting is what your wife ain't supposed to be able to have. Some of you are missing it, but you're about to get what life said you would never have. But you got to be able to thank God for the dirt underneath you and the stars that are hanging above you. You got to get something from the negative and not just reserve worship for the positive. Let's close on Abram. Let's close. You're holding someone's hand that you want to see wealthy, blessed. Healed, set free, delivered. Oh, God. I'm slowing down because I want to see whether you just let any old body touch you or you believe that it was the person near you. You didn't even do a, a real introspection on who should I touch today. Especially if who you touch ain't touched him all service. Sometimes you got to take it serious. I take it serious. I don't need your hand just because I need to feel a hand. I need someone connected to what I'm going through. This is about agreement. This is the difference between life and death. This is what, Haya, thank you, Jesus. Yep, I hear you, Lord. I hear you. This is actually how the story ends for now. The Lord is speaking. Abram says to God, how can you tell me that my seed shall be as the numbers of the stars and blessings when I don't even have a child? Abraham, look at me, you miss, never said those words. Everything God said, he just stepped out on it. He said, you're going to have children. He didn't bring up his wife barrenness. 
you're going to own land. He didn't bring up where there's nothing here. And even if it is mine, who's going to help me build? Oh, yeah. He just said, okay, okay, okay. You must submit to God by faith. And the best two words that lets me know that you trust God by faith for screamers is yes, Lord. Come on, don't play with those words. Say it. Yes, Lord. From the bottom of my heart to the depths of my soul. Yes, Lord. Completely yes. My soul, my passion, my emotions, my will. I felt that over there. Says yes. Dr. Deborah, his name was Abram, and all that means was an effective father, an elevated father. Abraham means father of many, father of multiples, but he was effective. The only thing that made him a father when he was Abram was that he took on the responsibility of Lot. And some of you have been parenting a lot. A lot of what you didn't birth. I'm closing. A lot of what you could have saved if you did not invest in whatever this or whoever this is. But now God says, I'm going to give you multiples of what you never had anything of. God's going to let what's in you come out. And give you something that will value you because it knows that it's a part of who you are. The person whose hand you're holding is believing God that what's for you is for you. And that if you need a little help, I'll give you a little time. But then I got to raise what's in me. Yeah. We all need a babysitter every now and then. Just to revive our strength. Just to get time of clarity. But then it's back to business. You're holding the hand of a future entrepreneur, millionaire. I'm, I, I've never said this, billionaire. I don't know who it's going to be. But if it's in my church, I'm going to be excited. One billionaire can pay all my bills for the rest of my life. You give 10% of a billion dollars, I'm straight for the rest of my life. I give 10% of that to my leader, he's straight too. You only need one of a thing. And that one of a thing can help many things. 10% of a billion is 100 million. 10% of 100 million is 10 million. 10% of 10 million is 1 million. Picture how many people all that could help. That's why you're being fought. That's why you're in a season of frustration. Because Satan knows if you ever get to the place called there and can interpret your nothing to mean something, you're going to be a beast. Look at that person without fear. Tell them, I am a force to be reckoned with. And I know it. You didn't go through all this for fun. And you sure didn't make it through it easy. You are a force. To be reckoned with. Might as well tell you this because this is not a part of any of the series. This is not a part of the series itself, but this is for people like my deacons and my elders and all of you who love God and love the word of God. The Bible says the only time that Abraham finally got relief from frustration 
is when he separated from a lot. Some of you got to show the devil, I'm with God whether I have a lot or lose a lot. Oh, y'all, once you can lose a lot and still be focused and watch a lot take the well-watered ground and you still walking in the wilderness, that's faith. Two things the devil's never going to steal from me. One is my mind. Can't let him have it. The second thing is not joy, it's my hope. Because my joy is not built on nothing less. The joy of the Lord is my strength. But my hope is built on nothing less. I can't let him have my mind. Anoint your own head so can't nobody put nothing in you. Being that we might be touched by some unfortunate spirits, touch yourself. Maybe you'll possess yourself, but touch yourself. And tell yourself, I can't let the devil have my mind. And I'll tell my church and those visiting, keep hope alive. Because some of you don't see it. You're a few steps away from the water. Did I tell you? And you remember Wednesday? Faith is not mentioned in hardly anywhere in the Old Testament. That word faith is not mentioned in the King James in the Old Testament. That word faith. But y'all said Abraham was the father of faith. That that's what Hebrews said. But he became the father of faith because he did something that they had to create a word for. Now, when I say this, 20 of you better jump or you'll miss millionaire status. They're going to have to come up with a word to identify who you are. I promise you. That's why they're calling you everything but a child of God. Because they don't have the correct words for you. Your city don't. Your church don't. Your job don't. They don't have a word. And when people can't identify you, they're threatened by you, whole hands. Remain a mystery. Let people go through life trying to figure you out. Did you enjoy the word of the Lord this afternoon? Hold hands, last time. I want to say to the woman who flew here all the way from Ypsilanti, wave at me, that God is creating a new piece of property with your name on it. God says, tell you, you're coming into some kind of legal monies that's going to change everything that you've ever ask God to do and you know it but God said the time they gave you I'm going to cut the time in half I'm going to bring it to you quick fast and in a hurry and somebody with a loud mouth ought to show God glory on the behalf of another sister there's a woman to the right of a man that's bald headed with a beard that looks like my light, light skin twin yeah him with the deep mean look right now looking down the the uh, woman to his right. Do you know that lady? That's your daughter. Well, the Lord said, tell you, because you came with her, two things are happening. One is, you're going to get a new home and your life is going to reset the lady. Two is, everything concerning your body and things going on shall be healed by the time we leave here today. God's going to heal your body. And someone with a loud mouth ought to help my brother because I see it in his face. Bishop, go lay hands on them quickly. Walk with him. I feel the Holy Ghost. I don't want nobody else to touch him until Father Hope has embraced him. All right, hold hands. Why y'all stopping? We going home now. I'm just giving you a little icing on your cake for you to take with you.
Amber Nugent, you remember I told you that one of your parents' parents was going to leave a blessing? I don't know which one back there, but I don't even think that they're fully aware of that at the age that they are, they're about to come into a lot of wealth as far as property and a piece of paper. The Lord says, tell you, your next 10 years are going to be some of the brightest and most blessed and shiny years of your life. And someone with a loud praise for them, I want you to send it up in Jesus' name. Almost done. You're holding the hand of somebody. Once you let them go, come back to them. I can let you go, but I'm coming back to you. I cannot name names. I cannot give the titles or the descriptions for what I see because it's a corporate word. But all of you that have any issue in your bloodstreams, I don't care what the issue is, high blood, sickle cell, whatever sickness is found within the blood, they say the launching pad for the illness is normally in your colon. But the Lord said, tell every last one of you that have anything that's blood related, he said, by 12 noon tomorrow, he'll begin to heal you in that area. That includes blood clots, tumors, that includes all kinds of growths, Watch God. And there are several, even two of you HIV positive, don't scream, but you'll be healed too. God says, tell you. Whatever a human can make a medication for, I can give it in the form of a miracle. Medication does not cure. It just prolongs. And I don't want any of you self-righteous folk judging anybody's disease because it could have been you it could have been me it could have been anyone Someone shout glory to God. I want to say to the woman in the orange who blew kisses at all of us that the Holy Ghost says, number one, I'm going to save all of the rest of the family. God says, especially two of them that the demons of hell continue to chase. I know y'all know about it. But God said, about time you get home, I will have them in my custody. And I will put you in a place to lay hands on them. One of them you can't touch, but the other one you can. God says, tell her I need her to live longer because her days of intercessory prayer is not over. I shall revive her ministry. I shall revive it in my name, saith the Lord. Somebody shout, yes Lord. yes, Lord. And to the woman that invited her, you are a prophet of God. God said, right now, even the church and things in which you are, God says, I have you on a journey. God said, that's why you had to come here to get a dose of the oil that you need. God says, I shall also bring three of your dreams to pass that I have allowed you to have. But God said, anyone that's ever called you mother shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost within the next few months to come. 
And God said, tell you something that's going to make me sound crazy. Said, tell her love will be better the second time around. God says, I've got you covered, saith the Lord God of hosts. You shall be made whole even in the realm of marriage. Y'all ain't talking. You shall be made whole. Yes, Lord. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we got to go. Yeah. 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 What's your fi fiance's name, Tierra? See, you thought I didn't know. Tierra, you have both parents? Both biological? Which one is not saved? Just say it. Neither one? They both? You thought. Something about the father, right? See? Right, you thought. Mm hmm because somebody says they believe in God don't mean they're saved or go to church. But God said the father had a lot of questions and you've been praying and going through something. But God said in 21 days I'm going to show him who I am and I'll bring peace to the family. And someone with a loud mouth ought to clap your hands and open your mouth. Glory to God. Glory to God. Now, y'all know I don't prophesy in here much, but every now and then, you can feel something turning. I told you, after you let my hands go, come back to me. So, Deborah, I need to ask you something. And let me first say this to you. God does, God does not assist us in dating and who hurts us in men and women. Don't pray them prayers because he don't care. You've got to love yourself enough to know who to let in and who to keep away. God said, if you get hurt, that will be what you summoned. He said, but the bigger picture is that the doctors are going to try to tell you they found something that they first said was not present. Something about your blood, something about what's going on. The Lord said, tell her, if she gives me eight days of worship in the morning, tell her I will not just heal her, but I'll heal the issue that's causing her to hold the weight. God says, when I have healed you, you will begin to drop the weight unto the place of your pleasure. And, some, and that will change the insecurity and low self-esteem that possesses you in picking poor relationships. Glory to God. Glory be to God. Glory to God. Hold hands for the last time. This I cannot, listen, this I cannot dwell on. Because I can't believe that God is calling this a disease. Never heard of it, not in the DSM-5, DSM-3, 4. When I started studying psych, I've never heard of certain things being a disorder or a disease. But some of you, in particularly four of you women, will never make it in life with changing jobs or cities because you have the disease called need it. You move on with something in the future while you're really in love with the past. You have a terrible disorder. And the reason why you have that disorder is God has not become first. 
Instead of you moving away thinking that's your journey, you need to draw closer to God. And start, hallelujah. I could pick out all four of you and I'm going to be nice. But you need to repent to God when you get to your vehicles and tell God, become the man of my life for now. He's not going to kiss you. He's not going to hug you. He's not going to read you poetry. But he's going to give you the strength and a direction to see that the future is loaded with things that will make your past a vapor. Y'all don't hear me. So I asked God to give these four people a new mind. This is a mental illness that you're dealing with. And it's going to cause you to make a decision that's going to mess up your future. What's crazy is all four are here in the building. Go back, rectify it, and this time make God number one. And you might find out that what's for your future is the one you couldn't let go of. Because you never gave God his first. The healing is not another relationship. The cure is get back to God. And if you've never given God the attention you gave him, this would be a good time. Let me use some songs so y'all get off me. I gave it over to the Lord. That's all you got? Oh, yeah. I can pick out all four of you, and I'm upset because all four of you are beautiful. Two of you I know, two of you I don't. But y'all got to be kidding. What you see when you look in the mirror? You're achievers. you beautiful young women. You get hit on all the time. What you need him for? He was a date and a mate, not a husband. Thank God for the good time you had and move on. And while you're moving on, shut up. All four of you, one in this section, one here, and two back here. It, it, it makes no sense. Don't let your hurt make your next decision. I ain't never heard that. Somebody write that. Send it to my phone, whoever know me. Don't let your hurt make your next decision. I'm going to preach that, so help me God, somewhere. So help me God, I'm going to rip a hole in that sermon the next time I preach it. You need to see you as Sarah, not Sariah. You're not barren. You're productive. This Wednesday, I'm going to tear a hole in this sermon and give you some real points to make faith better. You need to be here. I'm not trying to coerce you, but I need you here because this is going to be a sermon or a series that can change all of our lives, including mine. When I'm studying it, it's changing me. When I deliver it to you, hopefully it's doing the same for you that it did for me when the Holy Spirit made me study it. There are no failures in this church. Will you pass that around the whole congregation? There are no failures in this church. There are no failures. There are no failures. Even if you got to tell it to a person who don't like you, give the gift of forgiveness to them and let everybody know again, none of us are failures in this church. You that are watching and will see this when you see it, there are no failures. There's only faithful. To the lady in the purple that's been pushing me, what church you from? You're, uh, you're a member of this church? I have no idea, believe it or not. What is your name? Angelina? I want to say to you, that the oil that I walk in as a prophet, God is making it accessible to you. God says, tell you, your past 11 years of going up and down, they end today at 10 p.m. After that, you will see God clearly and somebody with a loud mouth, not jealous, unbiased.
You said what? I see you pointing at me. Oh, go ahead and speak, mama. Really? Well, thank God for my chance. And to the one in the blonde hair, how old are you? You need to be thinking about marriage because God said I'm fixing something for her. Tell her I'm not going to let her keep going back and forth. Y'all ain't talk. Tell her I'm going to make him say yes. Y'all ain't. And somebody with a loud mouth ought to open it as loud as you can. And for all y'all that say anybody will scream over marriage, that ain't true no more. That ain't true no more. People be like, mm mm. Elder Curry, help me. Father Hope, help me. To the lady to your left, I'm gonna have both of you lay hands on her shoulder shortly. You are going to be totally healed to the woman on the end. You're gonna be totally delivered. You're gonna receive so much joy. God says, tell her she will no longer have to move because she don't want to. Tell her after today, I'm going to give her a permanent residence and it will be paid for in a modest amount of time. Y'all do it now in the name of Jesus. And I don't hear nobody saying anything. Lord, have mercy. I wish I had a church that understood. Yep. <laughs> Baby, come here. What's your name again? Talk loud. Say it again. Spell it. Epic? All right. You can go back. Um, epic. Y'all say epic. epic. Wow, that's a beautiful name. Because this is going to be an epic kind of prophecy right here. This is epic too. The Lord told me, and I need to see who's going to scream. God said, it's because of you, no one else, that he's about to fix all the money in your family. God says... Y'all will have a place called home. You will not move from pillar to post. I will show you my glory. And God says, I'm going behind prison bars. I don't know what's going on, but God. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. God says she's been giving God secret prayers without her family. God said the real prayer warrior of that family is epic. She talks to him with a pure heart. And last but not least, then let's go and eat and y'all enjoy yourselves. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. What's your name, mother? Give me your whole name as it would appear on a birth certificate. Yes. Brenda Ann Shepherd. How do we spell that last name? Shepherd and Shepherd. All right. I want to say to you while I was up here prophesying the epic that God showed me, and please let me finish, your name was on a tombstone. You were going to be asleep and couldn't breathe. The Lord said, but tell her. I'm going to go in every organ in her respiratory. And I'm going to open up every unclogged valve. Every unclogged valve. I feel the Holy Ghost. There was... 
Is there anything wrong with your breathing? What is it? You have a what? Oh, you have a blocked aorta. And that's why it doesn't flap right. Really? I had... Oh, and you used to use oxygen tank. So, you don't use the oxygen machine because now they found a medication to help you breathe without it. But they have not been able to fix the aorta. Not by midnight. The gutters? It is not by might. Stand up, put your hands on your chest, on your heart. Move it over just a little more, right there. Now God, we decree and declare new valves, new heart, a new pump. Be healed in Jesus' name. And every, oh, Shanda Baha. And everyone that believes it ought to shout a praise unto God in Jesus' mighty name. Hey! Glory. Hold hands, we're closing. This is what the scriptures say all things are possible. To them that believe. I'm going to quote it again until my church catches it. All things are possible. To them that believe. All things. Not some things. Hey, yeah. All things. Hey, hey, hey. Remember as you're holding hands, pray for our church. Pray for our leadership on a regular basis. Pray for your ministry. Cover where your soul is fed. Don't fall privy to Satan's devices. I'm protecting a lot of you who people call witches and not say, don't prove them right. Walk up right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How do I pronounce it? Is it Isa? How? Isa? Thank you, because I wanted to pronounce it right. You may not understand this, but through your, uh, I call it lamenting. But in a good way, the Lord says it's almost impossible, but he's about to release property at a low price. God said this property will not just be for ministry. You will be mentoring men who have come out of prison, men who have come from different religions. God says when I'm finished with you, they will send you grants and appointments that will come up to $250,000. God says your season begins in the month of August of this year. And somebody with a loud mouth, y'all help Issa. I got to go. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah.
As your heads are bowed and your eyes are closed, I want to thank all of you for your gifts of love and donations, cards, texts. Everything does not have to show in monetary value, but I thank you for the love that you've shown to me on this year. That love was needed this year. It's been a challenging year, but without any regrets, I thank God for everything I've gone through. But I praise him for everything I've come out of. Y'all to hear, I said I thank him for everything I've been through. But I praise him for everything that I've come out of. And the same God that did it for me, he's going to do it for you. I stand on the Bible that upon this rock, God said, I'll build my church. And the very gates of hell. Montez, who's the young lady to the left? Find her name, scream it out to me and her age. She's 26. Ask her, has she been to school? Did you stop at one point? You stopped. Did you get your degree or your certificate of anything? Yes, it was late. I want to say to you, young lady, that any type of bills or monies you owe concerning this, God says he's deleting your debt while we are standing here in the church. And someone with a loud mouth ought to help whoever that is. There was a year, and I lie not. There was a year, and I lie not, that I prophesied, Sister Apostle L Lorraine, there was a year when I was in Atlanta, Georgia, preaching at the Cathedral of Faith Church of God in Christ on Avon Avenue. I told a whole class in Morehouse, your student loan will be paid this year. My name went through Georgia and everywhere as a false prophet. They just went crazy. This man done hyped them kids, talking about their bills going to be paid. Y'all stay away from Prophet Hall. I didn't care because I only say what God says to say. Two months later, it was on the news. Robert F. Smith, billionaire, pays off all the student loan debt of the entire class. Y'all ain't talking. And God... And I told Brother Apostle, I told a church last week on Thursday in Raleigh at the Hilton Hotel on Wake Forest Road. I said to one couple's daughter, you are number 78 on Biden's list of debt forgiveness, but it may not happen because he may not win. They laughed. She didn't laugh. She was excited. Looked at my cash app this morning. I had a $500 C, right? Now, don't clever on that. And I didn't know the name of the people. So I just looked because I get blessed every now and then. And I was like, who would give me $500? And it don't say birthday. It don't say for prophecy. It just said thank you. So then I got a call from the driver from Raleigh, North Carolina. He called. He said, I gave a couple your cash app. Can you look at it and tell me whether you got anything? Their name is so-and-so. I said, yeah, they sent $500. He said, okay, I just want to make sure you got it. I said, man, don't hang up. Why did they send me this? My birthday or something? I said, there's no reason. He said, no, you said their daughter was 78, but it happened yesterday. <laughs> and the debt was $31,000. So I... I had one other person, her debt was $120,000. Before President Biden goes out, he will have helped so many of you in the educational department. That's why I said you got to have the faith to finish, not the finances. 
you got to trust God. Because while you're trying to figure it out, I'm going to ask all of you to get a sufficient seed for today. Our tur rumors must become healthy. I'm going to ask three of you who God has blessed with quite a bit of money to give better than you've ever given. Let me say it again. This is a faith move for three of you. The rest of you, you, you are being faithful in your giving. But for the three, you have to be full of faith. I want you to understand that to get to the point of success where others are, you have to sometime make the same sacrifices that they made. I'm blessed not because I have money. I have money because I have faith. And I walked it out. Y'all ain't talking to me. I want my church to do your best not to try to miss any of this month's services dealing with faith or, or next month. This is a critical teaching for your Christian growth. Amen? Amen? Before you make decisions that work against you and put you back where you started, you need to make sure you're hearing from God. How many want to make sure the voice you hear is the voice of the Lord? I want to thank you for allowing me to read my second letter to you all. I want you to think about it, reminisce, digest it in a healthy way, and be a good member of your church. Amen? Because we need to succeed, not recede. Amen? I'm tired of the recession by watching people get personal. Let's learn how to be personable. Amen? Let's learn to love even them that hate us. And you will find out that that's the love that God has. It's called unconditional love. Now, I ain't going to never sit nowhere and let somebody talk about what I love in my face. Now, I ain't going to never let that happen. Because that's called thugonomics. Y'all understand thugonomics, don't you? You cannot talk about my family, my leader, or my church in my presence. Amen. So, but if it's out of my presence, I'm praying for you. And I'm asking God to give you clarity because we love everybody. And we ain't going to stop growing until we can say that and mean it. Practice it. I love everybody. See, y'all can't even say it right because we got a long way to go. Now, I don't like everybody, but I love everyone. I do. I love everyone. Even you, Maze. I love everybody. <laughs> I love everybody. Three of you, I won't ask you what you're giving, but if you know you're giving a healthy offering in an unusual way, I'm going to give you 30 seconds. Once you plant it in the basket, God says, I'm going to start making you so wealthy that you'll be able to be a blessing being able to bless people without ever hurting yourself. I'm going to give those three people 30 seconds. Please do not lie to the Holy Spirit because this is a critical moment in time that when you do it, all of your resources are going to shift and you're going to be able to be a blessing and not feel it ever at all. Whoever you are, start coming and sow into the kingdom. Y'all clap for these that are coming in Jesus' name. I said clap like you love God. Thank you. Thank you very much. That sound good to me. Amen. These are for those that are giving that unusual healthy offering. If you've given whatever Dr. Mixon acts, we appreciate you. I don't know how she'll tally it. I'm sure some did it in Cash App, so we won't look for it. We'll just believe it's done. I ain't going to do too much with it, but probably lend some of it to the same folk that still owe me money. Y'all ain't, ain't talking to me. Are you pleased with it? If not, then tell her to decrease it. All right, good. Because I'm on the man's side now. I'm, I'm, I'm tired of these women winning. I'm on the man's side. And she my best friend, but I'm on your side right now. Use it while I'm on your side. Doc. I'm on your side because you've come through hell and high water. And you have made it through the biggest crisis of your life. And I want to be a part of the joy of your latter days. I want you to be able to say, that's my man. 
That's my pastor. That's my guy. I want to be that for you. Amen. Everyone else that knows that you're giving a good, sufficient, here, hold on, here comes another man. This my man, I think, who came before, who danced up in my church. I tell my hashia, watch it now. Yep, yep, that's him. Thank you, sir. Y'all clap for that sharp man. I appreciate it. Everyone else, whatever you're giving, give it from your heart or don't give it at all. Come in Jesus' name. You are the living word. Hey, church, we blessed. Somebody shout, we are blessed. Tell you, everybody does not have a bad motive. Some people's motives are pure, attached to nothing selfish. And when they get it, we will all be recipients. Uh, to the man in the gray suit, what do you do for a living? Can't hear you. What? Soda? S-O-D-A? Oh, solar. Solar. All right. Because I was wondering why for about the past hour over your head, I saw $12.5 million. The Lord said, tell him his number surpassed that, but tell him I'm guaranteeing him that right now. Tell him they'll be in four states very quickly and very fast. Because you're going all the way up. I don't hear, and somebody with a loud mouth, hear them and say, oh! oh. One good time. Everybody.
what is it? Awesome ruler, gentle redeemer. One big time now, everybody. Say, oh! God bless you. Thank you for being here with us. Dance and worship production rehearsal is today. So we ask that everyone after service has ended, that you would please exit out of the sanctuary so that they may be able to begin their rehearsal. We also want to say that all adjutants, security, and deacons, all adjutants, security, and deacons, please meet with Minister Katrina Ferguson here in the sanctuary for a very quick meeting on this Thursday is rehearsal. Praise team rehearsal starts. Choir and praise team rehearsal starts at 7 p.m. this Thursday. But please be aware that there is no rehearsal on the 4th of July. I'm sure somebody's going to be barbecuing and swimming and everything else. So we will not be here singing and rehearsing. Amen. Also, Wednesday night. Somebody say Wednesday. Someone say Wednesday. Please join us for worship in the word. How many of you enjoyed this beginning of this series on faith? He spoke directly to me today. Amen. So on Wednesday, we want you to be present on Wednesday night. And we want you to bring a neighbor, bring a friend with you. Let's make it look like Sunday on Wednesday. Amen. We want to thank you again for worshiping with us. Uh, Overseer and Apostle, thank you so much for worshiping with us. And to everyone, our guests who are here, thank you so much. Grab a neighbor by the hand. We're going home. Father, we thank you for this time of worship and service. But as we leave this place, but never from your presence, give us traveling mercies that all things will be found well and in order when we arrive at our several destinations. Thank you for the word you've given us today, God. I ask, Lord, that it would take root, spring up, and bring forth fruit in due season. I ask that you would bless the food wherever they go to eat today. Let it be for the nourishment of their bodies. And, Lord, I ask that you would keep us from all hurt, harm, and danger. In Jesus' name, we declare it so. Amen and amen. Love on somebody before you walk out that door.